how do you do, friends of the Inner Sanctum? This is Raymond, your host of the Squeaking Door. Uh, come right in. Uh, what are you staring at? Hmm? Oh, him. Oh, he won't hurt you. He's been dead for years. He came here with our first program. Said nothing could scare him. <laughs> I've been using him for a doorstop ever since. Have to get a new one, though. His bones are showing through. <laughs> My friend, did you know that this is a bad winter for our ghost friend? Oh, my, yes. There aren't enough sheets to go around, and lots of them have horrible colds. They float around just coughing and coughing their heads on. <laughs> Are you all set? The coast of Maine Express is already an hour out of Boston. It's noon of a windy November day as the New England landscape flashes past. On the train, the crowds of servicemen, doting mothers, babies, salesmen, and a man who was this day acquitted of murder because the police couldn't find the body. Richard Fenner sits alone, the suspicion of a smile tugging at thin lips that whisper what his eyes follow on the paper. Body of Ole Svensorg, color chemist of Satan's Point, Maine, still unfound. Svensorg was known to be developing a paint formula, making it possible for colorblind people to see reds and greens as normal people see them. It is believed that the chemist had the final notes for his successful formula on his person. Richard Fenner, youthful assistant, on whom Sven Torg tested his pigment, admitted he may have killed Sven Torg in a fit of temporary insanity induced by the experiment. He was found in a dazed condition with blood on his hands on the day of the chemist's death. He Hello, all... friend. Anybody sitting here? No? Go on. Have a peanut? No, thank you. Best food in the world. Have a peanut. Always eat them. Name's Boss, friend. Jess the Boss. Travels for Goodman's Sex Store. Don't feel like talking, huh? Got some thinking to do? Well, that's all right. I'll just read a while. Idiot. I've done my thinking. So many things to think about. So much for Anna and me to remember. It had been hard to convince Anna at first. Easy enough for me to say, we have to get rid of Oli. But Oli was Anna's brother. We talked it over on the cliff near the land. We have to, Anna. We have to go through with it. Oh, Richard, there must be some other way. The way things are now, everything's hopeless. You know that. With the paint formula cleared, we can be married. Richard, I love you so much. I'd do anything for us. But the, this, this is... Murder? Huh. Well, you needn't look at it that way, darling. So far as you're concerned, Oli will just uh, disappear. But suppose something goes wrong. Suppose you're convicted. Not a chance. You can't convict a man for murder until you find the body. Oh. And they'll never find Oli. We must, Anna. We must. Very well, Richard. When? When will you... The moment Holy finishes the formula. It's almost ready now. I'll have to do it that instant to make my alibi hold. Today, tomorrow, soon, anyhow. Everything else is ready. I love you above everything else in the world, Richard. I love you enough for even... Have a peanut, friend? No. Oh, it's losing, huh? Traveling on trains makes some people sleepy. Not me. Been on trains all my life. Never get sleepy. Boom far? Satan's Point, Maine. Satan's Point? Never heard of it. Must be a devil of a small place. <laughs> what I said. Satan's Point. Devil of a small place. Good, huh? Have a peanut? 
Devil of a place. Devil of a place. Devil of a place. We went over every detail again and again until our story was perfect. A lot depended on the story we constructed. A lot depended on telling it well. I told it well. To the police in Maine and to the A units in Boston. I started the story with the morning of October 11th in Oli's laboratory. I hold on. This is my last mixture. It will be ready in a few minutes. I want your eyes to be well rested. Think you've got it this time, Oli? No, there's no longer any doubt. When these pigments are mixed, I will paint a square board. It will look like a dirty green to my eyes. And to mine? To yours. And those are millions of others who are colorblind. Red. Red that you have only imagined till now. Red of the rose. Red of a sunset. Red of fire. Red of blood. I put the blindfold on. I could sense all his tenseness. He'd worked 15 years to make this moment arrive. Which is from all I can see. A miracle is about to take place. But I confess to one great fear. What's that, Ollie? I'm not afraid the formula is wrong. I'm afraid for you. For me? Yes. I have to warn you, Richard. I don't know. No one knows what mental reaction takes place when a person who has never seen color before suddenly does. You... You mean that I could be affected... You could be. You see, red excites even normal people. It vibrates in the brain. But you... Let's have a look, Ollie. Now, Richard, when you take the blindfold off, look straight ahead of you. The board is right before your eyes. Look, Richard. And when you do, start talking right away. I want your immediate reaction. Okay, here it goes. Look. See, Richard. Look, at red. I couldn't. It's hard enough to recall the little that I threw. I was staring straight ahead of me at a square board. Nothing happened for a brief instant. And then... I caught my breath sharply. My eyes dried. They burned. I closed them, but the patch of exquisite color seared my brain. A single hot, flashing stab of pain pierced my head. And then I felt a surging power, a physical power, grip me. And only his voice reached me, jabbed at me. My whole being seemed to focus on his voice. I had to choke it off. I vividly recall reaching for him across something and finding his throat. And then... Then nothing more. Nothing but the breaking of glass and a sensation of violent action. Motion and action that lasted long after the voice stopped. Then I felt cold air lash. I was carrying something limp and heavy. There's a point of rock outside the house. It juts over the sea. I stood there for I don't know how long. The first clear thing I recall is identifying Anna's voice coming towards me. Richard! Richard! Darling, what are you doing? Richard! The hand! Something died in me. I sank to the ground, moaning. Anna. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Well, that was my story. That's what I told them all. They didn't believe me, so what? They didn't find Oli. <laughs> Anna told her own story as well About coming back from town in the station wagon Finding me on the rock with blood in my hands In the time they searched the house and the grounds They came close, too close, just once It was the day they gave up the search I was standing in the yard with the guard When the inspector called me over to the little meat house near the cliff Well, they'd been through it before But the inspector held something in his 
You sure in your day's mandarins you didn't come near this meat house, Fenner? Well, I can't be sure of anything, Inspector. I, I don't think so. Why? There's no felt hat I overlooked before. Got the initials O.S. Anthony. Oh, these hats. I missed it out. Was our whole plan going to be upset by a hat? Hey, Fenner? It's Oli. He always wore it out here when he worked on his knee. No? And the blood on the brim? <laughs> well, look around you for the answer to that one. Oli was proud of his larder. He just hung two quarters of beef the other day for aging. Right over there, see? It was fresh killed stock. Blood probably came from that. Hmm. Yeah. They know the blood tested anyhow. All right, Benham. You can go back now. I walked away a little elated. Yeah, but it's a funny thing. It plays tricks. Even on detectives. People are used to thinking of bodies as being so many feet long, with two legs, two arms, and a head. Up, I guess. Yes, this is it. I'm sorry I was such a poor traveling companion. Oh, that's all right. Feel that way myself sometimes. Have some peanuts? <laughs> no, Ray. <laughs> so long. Anna! Oh, hello, darling. Oh, please. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> Everything went just as you said it would, didn't it? And now you're free. Huh? Free, but not safe uh, yet, baby. Don't talk yet. Oh. Let's get in the station wagon for a second. Papers believed our story, did they? No, but it's just as well. It makes tonight's work easier. But there are so many things I don't understand. Isn't there some other way we can... No. And it's just as well you don't know everything, Anna. There's less chance of your making a slip. It seems to me that I'm in this as deeply as you are. All right, all right. I'll tell you this much. The papers played up the fact that Ole had the final formula on his person when he was killed. The formula we thought was on the lab table, right? Yes. Well, that leaves two things I have to do. I have to search Oli's clothing for this thing, and, well, the other thing should be obvious. Oh, don't, Richard. You, you talk about those things so coldly. Well, it's a cold subject, isn't it? <laughs> now, I see the house now. Put your lights off. Did you make the phone call I told you to? Yes, the man said all arrangements had been carefully made. He said the rest was up to you. <laughs> you wasn't kidding. Okay, pull up at the garage. around you as we walk into the house. Oh, I'm not as calm as I thought I'd be. You've got nothing to be afraid of, darling. Unless you believe in spirit. Richard, let's do what has to be done and go. Did you have that extra key made for the meat house? Yes. Yes, you did. Good. Now, do just as I tell you. My life depends on it. You will stand at the kitchen door with the lights off. And you won't take your eyes off the meat house for one second. That's right. The meat house door will be open so you can see me working. The lantern will make it light enough. Right now, I'm going to stand in front of the only window in the room we left the blind up on. While I'm there, you go get the dummy we had made to look like you. Put it in the chair in the position you're in now. That's that? Yes. All right, get the dummy. It's in the linen closet. It looks a lot more natural and comfortable than I am. Good. Now crawl below the window level into the kitchen. Set? All set. Here's the revolver. Now stay in the shadows while I light the lantern and leave. And then stand in the door as I told you to. And remember to watch the meat house. Scared? Yes, but I'll do my part. Don't worry. Just be careful and... Hurry. Well, this gruesome business will be over soon, baby, and it's worth it. What are a few days of this compared to what's in store for I know, I know. But hurry. Well, this is it. Now I have to work carefully. The meat house. Boy, this metal's cold. <laughs> a 
job that Ole is, too. <laughs> now, now, let's see. Put the lamp in here. So. And it's the three sacks on the meat hooks on the left side. <clears throat> Heavy. <clears throat> seem, seem heavier than when I put them up. Remembered where you hid poor Centaur's remains. What do you want, Bart? See? I can crack three notes with one hand. Good, huh? Just telling you, in case you think it might spoil my aim. For your little partner in crime sitting comfortably back in the house, waiting for you to finish your business here. What do you want, Bart? You and the formula, my friend. I followed your case very carefully. When I first read about you in the papers, I said to myself, Now, there's a very clever young operator. He's fibbing when he says he threw Sven Torg's body into the sea. So? So. Wouldn't take a chance and it's turning up on some shore. That would convict you. No body. No murder, eh, Fenner? Hmm. You're right, Pat. Then when I read that Sven Torg's formula was on him when you murdered him, I knew you'd have to get it from the body before, uh, destroying the corpus delicti. Simple? Mm hmm? All right, Pat. Put the cuffs on and let's go. <laughs> oh, gosh. I see you don't understand. I'm not a detective. And you're not going anywhere. Anymore. All I want is the formula. Oh, that's how it is. Mm hmm. That's how it is. Why? Why what? Why am I going to kill you? Because that's life insurance for him. My business. Why do I want the formula? Well, I tried to buy it from Centaur about a month ago. We knew we had it just about finished, but she turned me down. So you read about the murder, figured out that I was after it, and now you want to take it away from me. <laughs> Pretty low, Pat. Yeah. Well, you see, I can get a much better price for it than you can. Some friends of mine think it would be a valuable asset in counter camouflage, making targets in this country. Clever, hmm? Don't move a muscle, Mr. Bart. You? That little round thing in your neck is the muzzle of a thirty-eight. Just open your fingers very slowly and drop the gun. Stand still. All right, Richard. Good girl. Now I'm taking over, Butts. Nice Luger your friends gave you. Mm hmm. It is a nice gun. I, uh, I hope you won't hang me on those hooks. And oh, no. No, I've got other plans for you. Oh. Annie, you feel all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. It's just a thing on the floor. Well, I know. Well, don't look, darling. We're going back to the house now. And look, Bart, no breaks, please. You'd make a heavy corpse to drag from here. Wow, that's a very cozy little room. Tired and everything, huh? Okay, darling, make your phone call. Mr. Walt? Yes, we've been watching. You've got him? Yes, you can tell your men to close in on the house now. That was Mr. Walsh of the FBI, friend. Who 
good piece of work all the way through, Richard. Yes, sir. My first and last case, Walt. Well, we don't usually call on outsiders for help, you know, but this was such a natural. The box is apparently the man who's been dodging us so successfully. He's one of the Nazis' best men over here. Slippery fellow. Yeah. When you and Mr. Sventor came to us a month ago about the suspiciously high offer you'd had for the formula, it sounded like our man. He's got lots of dough to play with. But why the elaborate story of murder and intrigue? Well, making Richard here out to be a murderer took away the suspicion of a trap. We knew Richard would be released, no matter how phony the story he gave, because the police wouldn't find Mr. Sventork's body, of course. We knew the man we wanted would follow Richard here as soon as Richard was freed to get the formula. But we didn't have the slightest idea of what he looked like or who he was. Now... Now, you know. Well, I admit that was clever. My friends will be disappointed. And the son of a gun sat next to me on the train for eight hours. The old trip wasn't it? But uh, what about the um, uh, meat house angle? <laughs> the sacks. <laughs> that beef. Just good prime beef. In sacks, it uh, looks a little like uh, I planted all these clothes there. Oh, Richard, stop. I've had enough. And by the way, where is Mr. Spentor? Oh, my gosh. He came up here from the hotel this afternoon. I'm so used to thinking of him as dead that I forgot all about him. He's probably lost in the... Ah! Anna. Anna, you all right? Yes, I'm all right, Richard. Sure. Just give me up, but I... Richard! Oh. Richard, the laboratory! All right! All right, you still have a box, Mr. Walsh. Hold on to him. I'll take a look in the lab. Go ahead, Tennant. Holy! Holy, where are you? Holy! Holy. Yeah, Richard. I'm all right. Just my leg. The lighter match so we can see. Yeah, sure. Hurry, Richard. I want to see what's wrong. Let me. I, I'm holding a lit match, Oh? Oh. I see. Your eyes, Oli. He's all right, Anna. I'm bringing him out now. He's all right, yes. But never again to see the red of a rose. The red of fire. The red of a sunset. The red of blood. Oli's formula brought color to millions. Now, he's blind. Sanctum Mystery Novel is Puzzle for Puppets by Patrick Quentin. Well, now it's really time to close that there squeaking door until next week at this same time. So, uh, good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm-hmm.